Well, hey y'all, welcome to the face of the sun, otherwise known as Arkansas. It is sweet corn season, and look at here, my husband brought me in a couple dozen ears out of my son's sweet corn patch. I'm gonna get this shucked out size so it doesn't make a mess in the house. I've got my cutting board here. I'm gonna cut off any bad parts. And I got the trash can over here so I can uh, keep these all policed and keep those, keep these old uh, husks together. So we're gonna get back together when these are ready to take in the house and get them cleaned up. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna put them up. So I'm just gonna get to shucking and jiving over here. So I'll see y'all back here in just a little while. All right, y'all. I don't know if you can hear me or not, but the bottom has fallen out of it. And so we're just going to shut this last ear and I'm going to cut the bad spots off. And then we're going to take this in the house and we're going to get it washed up. So, I'm going to hurry so I don't want y'all to turn over because it's getting kind of windy out there. So, y'all hang on to your hair, Ethel. We'll see. I'll see you in the house. Okay, y'all. I have got it. In the house, I've sterilized my sink. I've got some cool water in there and I'm just gonna put this corn in this and then I'm gonna get it washed up. Okay, they are all washed and ready to go. There was a few silks, but I don't get too freaked out over that. My favorite thing to do is to use my big old Tupperware cake carrier and put it down in the sink because I'm five foot two. If I have it up here, I'm gonna make a pretty old mess everywhere. So let me show you the way I'm going to take this off of the off of the cob. I hope y'all can see this, but I've just got my little ratapari knife. Now you can use a larger knife, but if I use a larger knife, it hits on the side of my dish, and that is a no go. That makes me crazy. So anyway, what I do is I just take my knife and my ear of corn, and I'm just going to slice the top off of it like that. You see? And you don't want to go down deep enough that you get into the cob. We're just taking off that top layer. And we'll flip her around. And we're going to take off this right here. Now, I was a late in life child, and so my grandmothers were up there and so they had quit doing all this kind of stuff by the time I came along. But I have sat under many a tree and shucked many a uh, ear of corn with my mother. Okay, there we go. See, we got the first layer off. And you see there's still all that good goodness down in there. So we're gonna take the back of our knife and, and you're gonna take it and you're gonna mash down and you just wanna get all that milk. See what I'm doing? You wanna get this is called milking it. So you want to get all that milk out of this corn. And I do have a one of those wooden things with the teeth in it that you can do this, but I, I don't like it, y'all. It's not my thing. I just like to do it with a paring knife. And I find that it works better for me. I was talking to my sister the other day. We were talking about corn, and she was telling me that one year they had the most beautiful looking see now look we got every bit of that out put that to the side we may do something else with that i don't know but but they had the most beautiful field of corn now i'm going to do this again with, with this next one and they went out there the very next morning to pick it the coons had ate off of every single cob of their beautiful sweet corn that they had been babying all spring. <laughs> I tell you what, that just that just makes you just plumb sick. So I'm just going to cut this off here. One of our favorite things to do, I love it whenever we would get uh, black-eyed peas and purple hull peas. I, I could I could shut purple hull peas y'all all day long till the cows come home. Okay, we got all that. But you know, it's really hard anymore to find, uh, unless you grow them yourself in our area, it's hard to find uh, peas that haven't been already 
shucked and, and everything because I guess pe people just don't like to do stuff anymore. Not everything has to be fast. Sometimes you just want to slow down and put your hand to something. Now, can you buy corn in the store? Absolutely. Is it good? Absolutely. But we just need to be teaching these things to our younger people, y'all. We don't need all of the things that our ancestors used to do go by the wayside, you know, because food doesn't just come from the grocery store. A farmer has to grow it first. So we're just gonna keep on, keeping on. Okay, y'all, we are down to our last two and it's still showering a little bit down out there, but I'm gonna tell you something. Did you know that there is a thing called a spore shower? And of course, my family has been farming rice in Northeast Arkansas for five generations. And rice plants pollinate between 10 and two every day. So when you have a shower that comes through like this, it washes the pollen away. So all the kernels that would have been pollinated that day are blank. There's no corn, I'm corn, <laughs> I got corn on the brain. That's an interesting picture. Uh, but there's no, no rice kernels in that little hole for that day. So a lot of times you think any kind of rain is good, but whenever the rice is pollinating, it's not so much. And this year, my son, on the edge of one of his cornfields, planted six rows of sweet corn. And I tell you what, we've just been going to town on it. The neighbor's been coming to get it and all. Now let me tell you something on these corn cobs. I want your advice. I have never made corn cob jelly. Um, I was doing some research on it and they said it tasted like honey. Well, you know what else tastes, tastes like honey? Honey, <laughs> I got plenty of honey. So do I want to go through all the trouble to make corn cob jelly? Hmm, y'all tell me. If any of y'all have ever had corn cob jelly, let me know what you thought about it and if you think it is worth doing. Cause I know when the uh, muscadines come off, we're gonna make some muscadine jelly, which is my husband's very favorite. So, let me know what you think about corn cob jelly. But I'm gonna cook this in the microwave. Hold on to your hair, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> you can put this in a big pot on the stove and simmer it, but you gotta stay right there, y'all, on top of it. I'll tell you one thing, it will slide out, burn slicker than anything. But you can put it in, I, oh, I missed the spot. I was talking to y'all and I wasn't concentrating. But you can put it in the microwave and cover it with some saran wrap so it doesn't splatter everywhere like I'm making a big old mess right here. And you cook it seven minutes on, on high and then take it out and carefully remove the saran wrap and give it a good stir. And cover it back up and put it back in there. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I will see you whenever I take, I'll show you what I'm gonna, I, after I put it in the bowl and cover it, I'll show you real quick what it's gonna look like. But, but y'all put stuff in bowls before and covered it, so it's not like it's any big whoop. So, we can hear how much we got. Looky there, yummo. So, I'll see y'all back in just a minute. Okay, big bowl, just corn. No salt, no butter, no nothing. And I'm just gonna cover this up and I'm gonna vent it so it doesn't swell up like jiffy pop popcorn. <laughs> popcorn, huh? Hmm. Sounds good for supper, doesn't it? Okay, I've got a little vent right here. Now I'm gonna put this in the microwave and because this microwave at the cabin is as hot as the space of the sun, I'm gonna cook it for six minutes and then stir it. Uh, the one at home is not quite so powerful so I can do seven there. But anyway, this old rascal's too hot. But anyway, I'll see y'all back whenever I'm ready to stir it and see you back in just a second. Okay, y'all, it's gone through its first six minutes and I'm gonna put it back in at seven. Now take this plastic off very carefully and I'll have to use another piece because this is not going to go back on here. But you just want to be sure and set this on some, I've got it on a pot holder right now, but I'm just gonna give this a good turn. I wish you could smell it. It smells so good. 
So I'm gonna cover this back up. I'm gonna put it back in the microwave for seven minutes. And then I'm gonna let it cool. And then we'll get back together and we will um, put it in the freezer. So I will see y'all back then. Okay, y'all, it has cooled down. And we're gonna get us a little bite just to see what we think. Wow, wow, wow. Man, that doesn't need anything. That is sweet as sugar. Now I am going to put this in. I've got some freezer bags and the serving, you, you can put it, if you have a great big old tribe size family, you can put it in a great big gallon zipper ziplock zip thing, but for just the two of us, about two cups, is plenty, and then we can get usually two meals out of that. There we go. Doesn't have to be exact. There we go. Now, if the rain hadn't have blowed us in the house, we could have done a lot of this outside and kept the stickiness out, but that's okay. It'd be well worth it. And so I'm going to squeeze as much air out as possible. And then I'm going to put these flat. Because they'll just store better if they're flat in the freezer. There we go. One down and I have no idea how many more to go. So I'm just going to keep on keeping them. And if you turn your... Uh, bags, your Ziploc bags, or whatever you're using, kind of turn it inside out a little bit at the top. It kind of keeps that um, edge from getting yucky. And then it won't, it won't uh, close up for you without making a mess. So, there we go. And these stand up pretty well because these are the ones that have a kind of a, a, a flat bottom on them. Okay. You know, Mother never did can. Uh, corn. She canned uh, jelly, and so we always had corn out of the freezer, and it was always delicious. And if you do just a little bit at a time, y'all, you don't have to go get 5,100 ears of corn and just kill yourself trying to get it put away. Just get, I had two dozen ears. Got a paddle. And that'll be, that is plenty. I've got some to put up. I have not overloaded my apple cart. I don't even have an apple cart. <laughs> but I was on, I was reading some comments on, on something else on that when we're, we're warming up barbecue and uh, in a pan of hot water. And uh, someone commented on the very first microwaves. And I was just thinking, one of my uncles, my uncle Hurley, he got the very first radar range. Y'all remember radar ranges? He got the very first one in our family. And it was so amazing because he lived with grandma. <laughs> Mother and I went down there and we just stood there like we were watching the TV because he had put a cup of coffee, was it coffee? No, water. He put a cup of water in a styrofoam cup and put it in the radar range <laughs> and it bowled. It was the most amazing thing I ever saw in my life. I was probably eight or nine, you know, back whenever you were, back in the day, things amazed you when you were eight or nine. I don't know if these eight or nine year old kids are amazed by anything anymore. Did not get on that soapbox, did I? Okay, okay. let's see what we got here. I think we're gonna get one more bag out of this. Well, hang on a minute. Let me get, get myself together here. That's a little scant. Okay. Whenever I write on these with my Sharpie, on this one, I'm going to write that it's a cup and three-fourths because I feel like that's what it is.
There we go. And I will write the dates on these and, and two cups. And then on this one, I'll, I'll write a cup and three quarters. All right, there you go. There you go, y'all. We got four bags of corn. It took a little while. It was worth it. I got to remember some fun things and uh, not everything has to be fast, y'all. Y'all, it's just uh, put your hand to something and you'll be, do something that you would be proud to tell your grandchildren or your family that look what I did. And you'll be so tickled whenever it's February and it's cold as I'll get out and you can get a bag of corn from the summer out and you'll just be so, it's, sometimes it's okay to be proud of yourself. Not overly proud, you know, pride it is a bad thing, but you can be tickled that you did something that would have made your mama all happy. So, all right, y'all. I'm gonna let these cool a little bit more while I put them in the freezer because I don't want to cool down my, my freezer. So, there we go. Y'all go get you some sweet corn and put it in the freezer and go have some fun while you're doing it. So, bye, y'all.